Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy here for your daily dose of the RARS as we talk about the very stupid things going on in the modern world of technology. I am on location here at American Underground in Durham, North Carolina. I'm teaching a class on extending AI capabilities using REST APIs uh, tonight here. Uh, if you're interested in free the end user hands on technology classes uh, in Durham, North Carolina, you should take a look at our schedule at siliconatdojo.com if you want to help support these free the end user classes because free the end user is not actually free. There is a donor box link down below and with that let's talk about things that make us go hmm make us go hmm so one of the big things going on right now in the technology world is the whole AI arms race between the United States and China. We are told whoever wins the AI arms race will control the world which is crap <laughs> which is crap which is only slightly stupider to say than basically saying that we as Americans can control uh, the, the distribution or whatever of artificial intelligence around the world. The thought, the thought that we can control other civilizations' use of AI is only slightly stupider than the concept that whoever wins the AI race will win the world. Uh, but one of the things I've been talking about for a while now is that this is just, it's just not going to work with China. It's just... Again, we can fuck with Kenya. De dear Kenyans, no offense, but we can fuck with you, right? China, you can't fuck with quite the same degree. Again, 1.4 billion people, three or four times our population, uh, you know, basically consider the factory of the world, the whole nine yards. The reality is, is if you stop selling China products, they, by hook or by crook, are going to figure out how to build the products, and pretty goddamn soon they are going to be out competing us. Again, it's just, it's just basic math at the end of the day. And so one of the things I've been bringing up too is this whole thing where when technology gets uh, developed, right? When, when people are trying to figure out how to do things in the technology world, many times they figure out a solution uh, that is viable and scalable and replicatable. And even if it's not technically the best solution, they've already put so much investment money into coming up with a solution to begin with, they just go with that, right? So with NVIDIA or Intel or any of these companies, right, they put billions and billions, tens of billions of dollars into developing products. They will figure out a way to develop a product. Again, they'll verify that scalable, replicatable, all those kinds of things. And then they'll just move forward with that. And then all of a sudden, once they start to move forward, that becomes legacy and everything gets built on top of legacy. And so one of the problems that you can run into is sometimes people figure out there's actually a better way of doing things. There's a more efficient way of doing things, right? But there's already been so much investment put into this other route that people keep going down the other route because it's simply not worth it in our capitalist society to, 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 to just to fork off and do something different. And what's interesting right now is basically the United States is forcing China uh, to rethink how artificial intelligence is done at a fundamental architecture texture level <clears throat> question do things need to be designed the way NVIDIA and AMD and Intel has been designing things? Or in 2025, do they realize there's a better way of designing things? Right? I've talked about this a lot before with businesses. So many businesses we see in the modern world, right? They were developed in 2000 or they were developed in 1950. And they've been kind of duct taping new components onto the, onto the, to the business uh, as we go. And that's one of the reasons we get monstrosities. One of the questions you start to ask is, hey, if you're going to, if you're going to build build something in 2025. What if we're build something from square one in 2025? How would it look? I think about this like with things like grocery stores, right? So grocery stores back in the old days, when you build a grocery store, uh, you have the front parking lot for the customers and you have the back, back parking lot uh, for the trucks to come in, right? And that's that's the appropriate way to design a grocery store <clears throat> in, you know, 1950 or whatever. But now that we have uh, Instacart, now that we have these other services, one of the things to think about is, well, why, why not? build on a parking facility uh, for all these Instacart workers, right? Actu actually have parking spaces that are right up beside the grocery store for these people to be able to pull up to, uh, to make their lives easier. What, ab what about designing your grocery store with a break room and toilets and that type of thing for the, for the Instacart shoppers, that type of deal, right? That, that is structure. That would be structurally designing your grocery store 
store based off of 2025 reality, not off of, you know, 1950, right? So if you have a, a grocery store that was built in the 1950s and it starts doing Instacart, well, the Instacart people are going to have to, you know, park way out in the parking lot. They're going to come in, you know, they're going to have to use the toilets that the customers use. It's a very inefficient thing. So why not build it based off of 2025? Or when you start thinking about it, right, depending on where you're at, is it actually valuable to have people walking into your grocery store? Maybe it's better to have one of these dark stores, right, dark facilities, where the idea is that there is no customer facing uh, retail facility. It's all Instacart shoppers, right? How? How would you design a grocery store based off of 2025 if you're building it today? Uh, and one of the, the interesting things to be thinking about is again, how does that work with technology? You know, as technology has moved along, how would you actually design architectures based off of the technology that exists today? And so that's what's interesting here with Tom's Hardware. When we start talking about China, China claims domestically designed 14 nanometer logic chips can rival four nanometer NVIDIA silicon. Architecture leverages 3D hybrid bonding techniques for claimed 120 teraflops of power. Now to be clear, now to be clear, China man does propaganda too. <laughs> I wanna be crystal clear with this. China man does propaganda just like Yankee does, but I do think this is a interesting thing to be thinking about, right? So there's this whole idea that in the United States, in the Western world, with this company called ASML, that with the the litho if they're called lithography machines, that basically they create the the silicon, these chips that are smaller and smaller and smaller. So it was you know went from four nanometer to three nanometer to two nanometer. Now I think they're trying to do 1.8 nanometer, right? The size of the actual like the channels or whatever on, on the wafers. And one of the big arguments is, is that America is going to stop China from being able to get access to these latest versions of ASML's lithography machines. So one of the interesting questions that comes up is can China design systems to use older lithography methodology, but to actually get better performance? And I think, I think that's one of the things a lot of uh, the politicians in the United States aren't really grasping could be a significant issue. Uh, let's see here. Uh, at the ICC Global CEO Summit in Beijing, China Semiconductor Industry Association uh, <clears throat> Vice Chairman Wei Wei uh, Shengzhen uh, claimed that a new domestically designed AI processor using mature 14 nanometer logic and 18 nanometer DRAM nodes can match the performance of NVIDIA's current 4 nanometer chips. And again, the thing is like, well, well, there's no way that 14 nanometer can compete with 4 nanometer. But again, when you start thinking about the architecture, when you start, start thinking about all of the components that come together uh, to build your chips, your GPUs, that type of thing, if you can get more performance out of other areas, uh, the, the actual output might be more significant. Uh, the architecture with, which leveraged 3D hybrid bonding and software-defined near-memory computing is intended to counter China's reliance on the NVIDIA CUDA ecosystem. We pitched the design as a potential disruptive shift away from the U.S. dependency, calling it central to China's AI strategy, but fell short of disclosing any specific technology details, uh, hinting that he would, quote, leave some suspense for now. <sighs> propaganda. <laughs> Or, or in layman's terms, this might be a wee bit of propaganda. What he did describe was a was 14 nanometer logic bonded directly to 18 nanometer DRAM to drastically increase memory bandwidth and reduce compute latency. He said the system's power efficiency reaches two teraflops per watt, with a claimed total throughput of 120 teraflops, which is much higher than NVIDIA's A100 GPUs. He argued that by placing memory and logic in the same package, the chip avoids the memory wall that hinders large-scale GPU deployments. So basically what we're talking about here is many times, right, you have the CPU, the GPU, whatever, you have the processing unit, and you have the RAM. So whether it's a uh, uh, whether it's VRAM or whether it's DRAM or whatever else, it's it's on a different component, basically on the card. And so and so there's a bus. There's a bus, a, what's called a communication bus, that allows the processor to basically communicate uh, with the RAM, and the communication goes back and forth. Well, the important thing to understand is physically, the the farther the RAM is away from the processing unit, it actually takes longer for things to go back and forth. And by having these this bus uh, again. It 
increases latency for how long it takes communication to go from, from the RAM of whatever sort uh, uh, to the processing unit. And so the idea is what if you what if you bond the RAM directly to the processor? So we already see this uh, in Intel processors and other processors. You'll hear about L2 or L3 caching, and that, that is memory that is directly on the CPU. The larger that is, generally the better performance you'll get out of the CPU because the idea is the memory literally resides on the CPU itself. So the CPU gets access directly to that memory. So it's a hell of a lot faster, but, but it's not like you get like 20 gigs of L2 or L3 cache. You get like, I don't know, a couple hundred megs or whatever, a couple megs uh, at this point in time. And so what's interesting here though is like, what if they design GPUs to essentially have, let's say 10 gigs of L2 cache again, I know I probably got some 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 CPU engineers out there that may that may technically not work, but you, you get what I'm trying to say there. Uh, and so I think that might be an interesting way of again designing processors, designing these AI chips in a way to provide much better performance. If you can dramatic, I mean exponentially, dramatically reduce latency between the RAM, between the memory and the processor can that boost in speed uh, basically be able to surmount uh, the boost in speed NVIDIA gets from faster GPUs themselves? Right, And I think this is gonna be a very interesting thing going forward as we start to see the fracturing of artificial intelligence stacks uh, between the United States and China, it will be interesting to see uh, what path China goes down and, and if they actually figure out a better way of doing things. And that is, that is, you know, my concern. I mean, again, you look at Uber, right? Uber destroyed uh, the taxi uh, business, right? It did, and it illegally. Let's let's be clear, right? Uber committed felonies in the United States, right? Uh, Travis, the, the 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 founder of Uber, should be rotting in jail for a fucking decade. Let's be crystal clear. But the reality is, the reality is, ru rules for thee, not for Silicon Valley masters of the universe, right? And so that's the thing. Uber came in, they broke a tremendous number of laws, even though the CEO should be in jail for at least a decade. Basically, they were able to win the space because they designed a, let's, and let's face it, they designed a taxi service based off of 2010, not off of 1910, right? And that destroyed uh, the taxi business. Think about this, right? If, if, if China comes out and starts building these stacks based off of 2025, right? Not based off of 1955, could could they uh, you know get much faster, much better than we're currently doing, uh, and basically leave us in the dust? That is the big. That is a big concern that I have with a lot of this mess. Uh, so what do you think about this? What do you think? What do you think about an architecture that if you just hear the numbers, 14 nanometer versus four nanometer should be far behind, but they say they've built the architecture in such a way with memory latency and that type of thing uh, that they actually get better performance. What do you think about this fracturing of the AI tech stack between uh, China and the United States? And that China, again, if they're building based off of the concepts that we know today, based off of legacy that was built years ago, do you think they could leapfrog a lot of things that, that we're doing here in the United States? Basically, do you, do you think the United States is punishing China into being in a better position? I don't know. Put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate these videos, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing. Call me a dumbass. Just be a real Lutnik and put a strong American comment down there in the comment section. Do you remember I'm here uh, at location at American Underground in Durham, North Carolina, uh, doing a class tonight on uh, extending AI capabilities using REST APIs. We do many classes uh, here at American Underground. If you're interested, take a look at SiliconDojo.com. These are free to the end. These are hands-on classes. You just come and learn. They're free to the end. These are free to the end. These are is not actually free. Uh, we need some money to support the project. That's why I'm here every day screaming into this camera to get some of that dirty, dirty YouTube money. If you want to help support the project, there's a donor box link down below. And with that, see y'all later.